Blessed is the one who believes. The Bible places great importance in our faith or our belief. This statement is spoken for Mary, but in the story of Christmas, we know this is true for everyone who believes. Jesus said, everything is possible for him who believes. Because without faith, we cannot even exist in this world. We have to put our faith in each other and put our faith in the things we eat, put our faith in the vehicle we drive. Faith is very, very important part of our life. So is also our relationship with God. So anyone who believes becomes a blessed person. So let us read first before I uh, share briefly about the story of Christmas. Luke chapter 1 verse 39 to 56. We have to use a little bit of our imagination to understand that this passage from the Bible. The historical context is that for 400 years God did not speak to the nation of Israel. He did not send a prophet, neither there was any visionary, nor there was a, a preacher. The many people came pretending to be prophet, but for a long time people had not heard the message from God. Jews were longing for a message from God, and they had not heard. Then last week we saw Zechariah and Elizabeth. These are two old couple and they had two things in common or three we can say they were righteous they were innocent and they were obedient righteous innocent obedient in the context where there was no message coming from god all they had was the old testament books of moses and the psalms and the prophets so they believed in those books and waited for God to speak to them. Same way, Zechariah was very faithful, righteous and obedient. But his prayer was that, God, I want to have a child. But they did not, uh, could not have a child. Even though he was childless, his wife was barren and they had already gone into the old age, they had given up praying for themselves. But yet, this priest was praying for the nation of Israel, praying for God to speak to the nation of Israel. And then we saw angel comes to him and said, Zechariah, your wife is going to have a baby. And he said, impossible, how can this be? I am old, my wife is old, and on top of that, she was barren from young age. How can it be? Angel got upset and he said, because you didn't believe my message, you're going to be mute until the day the boy is born. So now, Zechariah did become mute and Elizabeth conceives. Now, she was already six months and then the same angel comes to Mary. These are simple, ordinary women. In fact, despised women. Elizabeth was old woman, barren woman. Everyone was mocking at her, looking her down upon. She was ridiculed, mocked at, made fun of, and she had no place in society. The angel tells her husband, your wife is going to conceive. She did not see the angel. But somehow, when she became pregnant, for five months she did not tell to anyone. Because in old days, it could be a terrible tumor in the stomach. So after five months, she confirmed that there is a baby in my stomach. Then she began to praise God. God, you have not forgotten me. People have forgotten me. People had rejected me, but you have not forgotten. So began, she began to praise God. And at the same time, the same angel comes to the young girl, Mary a village girl and then angel also said Mary you're going to have a baby 
and he is going to deliver his people from their sins that was the the most amazing message the humanity has ever heard that mary you're going to have a baby and you're going to name him jesus which means he will deliver his people from their sins so long human beings are longing to be righteous and holy and sinless from the time of humanity we see human beings are filled with sin and they are looking for solution to their sin and they could not find it. so people have tried to explain the problem of sin by many many different philosophies but nobody had told that there is a god in heaven who created you you have committed sin and you cannot get out of this sin by yourself and then god has become man and he is going to release you from the bondage of sin by taking your sin upon himself and his name is jesus that was the message given to mary but you know young girl and married girl just got engaged and now if people come to know she is pregnant the only remedy is that she would be stoned to death even today middle eastern countries uh, iran iran even afghanistan in pakistan there are so many young girls are killed because she was raped so because she was raped now the family's honor is gone instead of punishing the rapist they are killing the innocent women so we are talking about 2000 years ago a young girl unmarried girl mrs comes she is going to be pregnant she was be she was supposed to be terrified but this is something interesting the angel had said your cousin elizabeth who was old and barren she is also conceiving child so mary had only one person who would believe her story and that's why verse 39 mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste as soon as the angel told the message mary went away from uh, nazareth to the southern side of judean countryside where elizabeth's house was You see, when you are suffering in life, when you go through difficulties, if you share your problem to any person, they may never understand. But if you meet a person who also has gone through suffering, who has also gone through the similar experiences, they do experience, and then they understand when you try to tell your problem. Otherwise, if you tell your problem to anyone, they will use that to destroy your life. if you share your suffering if your secret struggle to someone instead of helping you they will use that to destroy you so mary could not even maybe share these things to her own parents they would never believe if she said angel told me i'm going to be pregnant they will say no this is not an angel you must be a loose character girl so she goes to judean countryside and enters the house of elizabeth okay verse 40 uh, 41 let's see when elizabeth heard mary's greeting the baby leaped in her womb and elizabeth was filled with the holy spirit she called out with a loud voice and said blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb Why am I so favored that the mother of my lord should come to me for behold when the voice of your greeting came into my ears the baby baby leaped in my womb for joy there was no facebook those days there was no telephone there was no letter there was no communication between mary and elizabeth but as soon as mary enters the compound you know in the village his houses are open and when elizabeth hears mary's sound she is filled with the holy spirit the very god who came to reside in mary's womb comes upon elizabeth 
and then when she is filled with the Holy Spirit, the baby who is about six months in the womb is also filled with the Holy Spirit. It's a village house, a carpenter house maybe, we don't know. Uh, I mean, he's a priest, but something he must be doing. He was busy somewhere, he couldn't speak. But his wife, she is filled with the Holy Spirit and began to praise God. And then she says to Mary, you are going to be a blessed woman. Why? Because you have believed what God has spoken to you. And the whole house is filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth, Mary, and Elizabeth's son in the womb. Zachariah must have come by now, but he couldn't speak. So there are four people, uh, three and one in the womb. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, if we seek God like Mary, like Elizabeth, like Zachariah, you don't need so many people around you to worship God. You can worship God in the secret place of your own house, in your heart, and wherever you worship God with the whole heart, with all your mind and soul, the very God who created the heavens and earth comes to live with us. That's what the Bible says. You and I are the temple of God. And now we go to church, and many people think that this is not a church, this is a house. And we go to a church with a huge spiral touching the sky with the cross and bell and all kind of stained glass windows, gold and all decorated inside. We think that is church. And we go to the temple with all kind of decorations and artistry and idols and all and we think that is the temple. We go to mosque and then mosque also magnificent, beautiful architect is there. The Bible says, wherever a human being who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, or who calls upon the name of the Lord and says, I am a sinful person, Lord, help me, forgive my sins. The God who created the universe decides to come and live in that person. So each individual, therefore the Bible says, is the image of God. In other words, the temple of God. You don't have to go to a mountain or to the river or to a church or a mosque or a temple to meet God. God meets wherever you are. That is the kind of God the Bible is trying to tell to us. So this uh, young girl and the old woman and the old man, three of them, they are filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to prophesy. So first Mary said, blessed are you among women. You see, the Bible places great importance on women. Right from the beginning. It was because of the woman that gospel was preached. From the seed of the woman, I will deliver you from your sins, God said to Adam. And when Jesus is born, it is to the woman, Mary. And then... Another woman confirms, that is Elizabeth, right from the beginning, God cares for man and woman together in oneness. So these two women are blessing each other, praising God and telling that Mary, you are going to be blessed among women because you have believed. When Elizabeth said this to, to Mary and when her son in the womb was jumping with joy, what did Mary say? Listen to what Mary said. Mary's word. Verse 46. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. She did not say how terrible it is that where am I going to hide this pregnancy for nine months? I'm going to die. No. She believed the message given to her by the angel. Mary Great and mighty things are going to come out of your womb. The one who is in your womb is a mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, the wonderful Counselor, and He is going to deliver people from their sin. That was the message given to Mary. And she believed, but yet she needed someone to conform it. 
So she comes to the house of Chakraya. When Elizabeth confirms this, she couldn't keep quiet. She began to praise God. She said, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. He has looked at the humble state of his servant. Look at humble state. It's a sorrow filled state to be in Mary's place at that time. I don't know some of your experiences how it is, but uh, when a young woman becomes pregnant outside the marriage, life can be very, very terrifying. It can be a nightmarish experience. So she did not know what to do. So now she said, God has looked upon me. And then verse uh, 47, 48, Behold, from now on, all generation will call me blessed. How you speak to yourself has a great significance. If you look in the mirror in the morning, you say, you're so and so. Sima, you're wonderful, you're beautiful, you're good, you're happy. It could happen. If you say, you're miserable, hopeless, useless, then it could end up happening like that. So your words have very, very powerful influence in how you live your life. So Mary, instead of living in her fearful situation, uncertainty, yes, God can, God said like this, but I don't know whether it will turn out the way the angel said, or not. I don't know, there is no guarantee. Instead of that, she says, my God, you have looked upon me with grace and favor. Now onward, people are going to call me blessed Mary, blessed Mary. No wonder if you go to the Roman Catholic Church, you know, it's all about Mary. Here we don't talk much about Mary. We talk about Jesus. But in the Roman Catholic Church and also in the Orthodox Church, it's all about Mary, Mary, Mary. Hail Mary, Mother of God. There she says, from now onward, through all generation, they are going to call me blessed. This could happen to you and I if we can truly, truly believe in what God says and then start speaking according to our belief. Uh, Sometimes I use very uh, useless words and my wife does correct me. Don't speak what you don't mean. Yeah? Sometimes we think that we are making fun of something. Don't even joke without uh, thinking. Because sometimes whatever is sarcastically you may say can end up happening. So don't say what you don't mean. Say only what you want to see happen in your life. Same thing with your children. Some of us have children here and some of us are not yet married. Speak to your child only the things that you want that child to be in life. Like my wife, when our son was young, every morning when he goes to school, she will pray for him. Alternatively, we do whenever I can. I will. If not, my wife, it's her job. Every time son goes, when he will, he will be putting his shoes on the door, at the door and my wife will be praying for him. Bless that child. When he comes out also, bless. Every morning, every evening, my wife spends long hours praying for all of you, our members in Nepal and here and there. Because whatever we speak, that's going to happen. But we must speak according to our belief, faith. It has to, heart and mouth has to come together. So Mary believed the message given to her by the angel. And now when she went to meet Elizabeth, she began to speak what she believed. And that one of them was, they're going to call me blessed. And not only that, she goes on. This is a Mary song. It's a worship song. It's a beautiful verse 50. His mercy is for generations and generations on those who fear him. The, another word for fear him is also believe in him. Anyone who believes the message given to that person, generation after generation will be blessed. Sometimes we are wondering why America becomes so powerful or Europe becomes so advanced in many different parts of, uh, than the other parts of the world. It's because in the beginning time, the founding people of Europe, like talk about Sweden, 
Denmark, Norway, even in England, even France. These were genuine people who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And especially America's case, it was purely people who were looking for a place where they could worship God. These Puritan people could not worship in Europe. They were persecuted in England. They were persecuted in Holland. And finally they found America. And they started a nation by believing in what God said. Even though America is now the place of all kind of sinful behavior, still the children are receiving the blessing. They will go on because in Deuteronomy, among the Ten Commandments, Deuteronomy 20, uh, 1920, if you read there, one of the commandments promises that God blesses the children of the righteous for a thousand generations, but he punishes the children of the wicked for third or fourth generation. You see, the wickedness may last three or four generations, but righteousness will last for a thousand generations. How gracious is God to those who would believe him. So when I share this message to you, I want you to also take the Bible very seriously, just like Mary took. And then believe and then speak according to what you believe. So Mary's message, uh, her, her song is that they will call her blessed and then his mercy, the mercy of God will last for generations after generation. On the other hand, uh, uh, let's see, 51. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. Proud. Pride is the beginning of all sins. The Bible says God created heaven and earth. It's a beautiful creation. But there was an angel in heaven who was beautifully decorated. God blessed that angel. And one day the angel said, I am so powerful. I am so beautiful. I am so glorious. Why do I need to worship God? I will be great, bigger than God. That's the beginning of sin in the universe. And then man became sinful the day he also wanted to become like God. So the Bible says God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Proud people will be scattered in their imagination. They will, they will be not found where they have gone. Next is 52. He has put down princes from their thrones and has exalted the lowly, lowly means the humble people who do not have any uh, pride in their heart. They are respectful, humble, kind, compassionate, always willing to lend a helping hand to other people. These are lowly people in the eyes of the people, but in the eyes of God, they are like Mary. Mary says, you have looked upon your humble servant, lowly servant. So God always lifts up the people who have no pride. But the moment you have pride, know that destruction will come soon. The Bible says, before destruction comes pride. If someone is going to fall down, their hearts will become proud. So here God lifts up the humble, but it destroys the proud. 53, he filled the hungry with good things. He sent the rich empty away. People who are hungry, who are poor, he gives them good things. But people who are proud and wealthy, they will go empty handed. He has helped Israel, his servant, and then she goes on to say, he fulfilled the promise given to Abraham. 56, Mary stayed with her about three months and then returned to her house. Why do you think she stayed with Elizabeth for three months? You know, when you are pregnant for the first time, it's a nightmare. Especially when my wife was uh, pregnant with my son. One day we had to go to hospital or something and I was... She did some, she was on the bed and I was trying to clean at the bottom of the bed. She wanted to vomit and she vomited all over my head. For first three months, it's not easy thing for many women. So Mary, she could not tell to her parents. 
So the first Prime Minister, she stayed with Elizabeth, took care of the baby in her womb. And after three months, when she confirmed now she is fully pregnant and uh, she overcame the morning sickness, now she comes home. I don't know how, by now maybe uh, Elizabeth must have convinced her parents also that Mary's pregnancy is something miraculous, something amazing. She is going to be a wonderful woman. Generations after generation we call her blessed because she believed what the message was given to her. So this is not only the story of Mary, it is our story too. I don't know what kind of problem you are in. But the message is, if you believe the message that Jesus has come to give to us, you will be blessed. And your children will be blessed after you. And he, God will lift you up from your humble state. He will give you whatever uh, the lack and the things that you are in need. He will fill you with the good things. And uh, he will be with you for all the time, no matter what you are going through. So this is the message of the Christmas, that those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they will be delivered from their sins, they will experience God's helping hand, and God will bless them, no matter in whatever circumstances.